Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome, everybody, to another session of Celebrating Act 2. With my partner and I, John Coleman, are speaking with Michelle Fabregas, our love and romance coach. <laughs> love what? and relationship. Coach. Relationship. Well, romance. You know, okay. Art is. And Michelle, you'll guarantee you'll you'll back me up on this. There's a difference between romance and relationship. We well, hope they go together, but they don't necessarily. Yeah, they, yeah. I guess you're right, but they do go together, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> come on. Can we have a bromance, John. Come on. You know, don't be. <laughs> we do. Don't be shy. Yeah, we do. And that's a relationship. Right. And we and now we have a coach to help us along uh, because we're beginning to stumble here. Uh, but we we actually had a pre. Pre-planned topic here, John. Something you never you know from the way we begin. Would you? Well, yeah, yeah, we like to stumble around a little bit, but uh, you and I both have um, uh, become em empty nesters quite some time ago, and eventually downsized. Right. And that that uh, I, I think we both had a very successful downsizing, but we know that's not always the case. Um, right. So, uh, uh, and we know there's some special things that. Um, People should be aware of that. And uh, Michelle, I know that uh, you've helped people do that and you've seen it in your own life. Uh, guide us, please help us. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, to be clear, I help support couples in that process, but it's not, you know, that's not like my expertise in downsizing, but it's more the you're, relationship. You're not, you're not the mover. You're not the real estate agent. <laughs> right. You're a coach. We get it. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, you know, it comes down to when you do anything really as a couple, it's like, you know, it's the key to really listen to each other's concerns and get curious, Sure. you know, and, and take your time if you can. I mean, sometimes we don't have that luxury to downsize. Something happens, we have to do it quickly. But the advantage of, you know, being proactive is that you have the time and then you can make the decisions and adapt more easily. But I did, I, I looked, um, I found an expert, Rita Wilkins, who's written a book about this. And the, the one thing to do is to first talk to other people about their experiences and get a feel for some of their challenges, maybe friends or neighbors or whatever, family members. And it's like, it kind of, you know, you kind of dip your toe in that way to hear about other people's experiences. And that can be a great start. Hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, my wife and I downsized, I think I'd have to count back, but about four times. Hmm. And it did get easier. Um, the first time was very difficult um, because it. I think we we weren't necessarily ready to downsize. We just needed to. We knew we had to do it. Um, and of course, you've you've got a lifetime of accumulating things. So it's you know, I don't want to lose my stuff. You don't want to lose your <laughs> stuff. I mean, it's, agreeing on the downsizing was difficult that we had to do it, but it was also difficult to pick and choose where we go, when we go, how we go, what we're gonna keep, what we're not gonna keep, do we do a garage sale? I can remember lots of, not arguments, but you know, how is this gonna possibly work? Well, uh, John, uh, I know that uh, we downsized once um, and uh, we inadvertently downsized correctly by moving to a uh, over 55 community. Ah. And and I know that your first, at least one of your early downsizes was just to a, a condo uh, right. uh, that, that was not uh, geared for the over 55, but we right. happened to go, we weren't planning on doing it, but it's just, we happened to fall across this place we were passing looking for homes. And finally yeah. the real estate agent says, why don't you come in there? And they had a, the house at the, Maybe it's slightly smaller than we wanted, but the right size, the right price, yeah. uh, the right everything. It was nearby uh, all of our grandchildren and so on and so forth. And it uh, took care of most of the maintenance, which I never cared that much about. I was okay at it. I built fences around the old property and stuff like that. But I didn't now have to do any of that. And I was very glad of that. We were both working at the time. Uh, so we actually made a move that made sense. And we have friends like Anne and Jerry who moved to an over 55 community. And she just was 50 at the time. Jerry's a little bit yeah. older. And that's worked out very well for them. So I think part of it has to do with that. 
Uh, but uh, we we found it to be painless. We knew that the place was too big, although we loved it. And uh, it was just time uh, not to have so, to maintain such a large property. So, Michelle, what do you do if you've got uh, if you're downsizing and you're the couple is not necessarily both on the same page? Yeah, well, I think it's um, there's kind of a way to kind of get used to the idea and kind of just talk about it, really. So, I mean, the first would be what would be the goal of, you know, the downsizing? Like, what are your individual reasons for moving and downsizing? You know, do you know how you want to live? You know, what would be simpler? How, you know, do you enjoy doing the maintenance or not? Would you rather not have to do that? So it's kind of like trying to see how sometimes we get so kind of stuck in our own ways, right? In our own lifestyle, the way we think we have to live. And it's good to just start the conversation and like, what would, what would be different? And maybe sometimes you need to talk to an impartial person as well to help you each sort out the differences around that. And, um, you know, often, obviously, the trade-offs, like, you know, there's financial trade-offs. There's um, things around like proximity to family and, and, you know, familiarity and things like that. But some of the things you can do is experiment. You know, you can rent a smaller place for a while and see how you like it. You can travel to some new locations and see how you like that. And, you know, one of the great things to get started on is just to start decluttering where you are, to start seeing what you have and seeing if you can part with less. And, you know, when you talk about, you know, conflict around things, it's like, you know, it's really important to honor each other's special things because sometimes it's just, you know, you might not understand their, you know, uh, G.I. Joe collection or whatever it might be, you know, and, it's you know, it's okay, but like to allow each other we're each going to have like slightly different things that we think are essential and yeah. whether it's a certain item or a certain location, or I want to be close to, you know, this golf course or, you know, whatever you might be into. So it's kind of like to be um, respectful of those differences. And, um, and, and sometimes it's the things are about the memories. Right. And so it's to help each other um, with that and not, you know, it's like, not a lot of ro eye rolling, you know, <laughs> try to keep that to a minimum and really um, get curious with each other. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think downsizing is different, significantly different than moving. We moved, uh, I must have moved uh, across the country at least once uh, in three or four different cities. And, um, and, and moving even with kids is, was not as traumatic as downsizing. Mm. Uh, because uh, just what you said that you you're you really have to let go of a lot of stuff when you're downsizing as opposed to moving up you know picking up and moving all your crap to a new city <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah. different thing yeah um, i, I yeah. Ab absolutely agree that uh, uh upsizing uh moving with a family or just in, in the same size but let's say to a new location uh uh always had its issues uh, um, you know, what's it at school? Are the kids, uh, do the kids think that their new friends are going to be cool? Particularly if you move way out of your, like we moved, as you did, John, from New York to, in our case, California. Uh, so, uh, but th those were pretty standard things that most people, even kids, begin to understand. Uh, but the downsizing, uh, for us, it was not only not traumatic, but we, we lived in our house for 20 some odd years as all our kids were growing up. So we had the maximum junk stuff and we had a yeah. full <laughs> loft above our garage that was like an entire house, probably the size of the house we live in now. And I remember we probably uh, had uh, the, the trash collector who came by, we must have had about 10 bags of stuff we threw out uh, every week for about 10 weeks. It was amazing the amount of stuff that we, you know, you saved every last, test that the kid brought well brought home and put on the refrigerator <laughs> uh but so that, that was sort of cathartic uh cleaning out all that stuff but it could be a, a, especially for a, a couple uh uh downsizing it may mean uh moving away from friends you've had for a long time we've had a, a couple that just downsized and moved to colorado to be near oh, their wow. grandchildren but they were pillars of the community. Uh, we all yeah. still love them and we're in touch with them. Uh, but yeah. they moved from California to Colorado. And uh, uh, one of the, 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 the guy in the, in the relationship is an avid golfer. So you're taking them away from 
close to 12 months a year of golfing um, mm. and lots of friends. So that sometimes becomes a problem. So there could be a lot of issues that, as you say, people need to talk about because uh, both, you know, it's like uh, uh, the the uh, the, pe the blind uh, person who looks at an elephant and touches them and one thinks it's a tree and somebody it thinks it's something else. So there could be a lot of different concepts of of what this downsizing is and you ought to find out what your partner feels about it. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I think right. downside the, we downsized a number of times, but the first time you do that, it's a good thing. I think if, if you can look at it as a positive growth, um, as you age, because after all, people don't, people don't downsize at 30 years old. You know, you're, you're downsized typically when the kids are, uh, mm -hmm. gone or when you know you're ready to retire and you've got a smaller income, you don't want to pay as much rent. Whatever the reason is, people downsize when they're older, when they're more mature, when they're in their act two. And I think it's a good mental exercise for everybody to prepare for getting older. So um, I'm trying to think how old we were. We were probably in our 50s when we downsized. Um, mm. And so that's a quite a number no, of years for us. ago now. Same for us. It was a good mental exercise to realize that you're getting older. You don't need the same things. Life is going to be different and you have to deal with it. You have to plan for it. Yeah, I like okay. that. I mean, I think it is, are we willing to stay flexible? Are we willing to keep changing and like meet the, the challenges or the opportunities that we have now at this stage in our life rather than think, you know, longingly look, I, I like to think of it as like when you're driving along the freeway, are you longingly looking at your rear view min window, seeing what's behind you, or are you able to orient towards what's going to be coming, you know, in the future and what's ahead of you, what's here right now? Yes. And, um, you know, one of these experts talks about this, you know, you can still have it all, you just get to decide what all is, mm -hmm. and right. all can be less, and that can lead to more time for other things and freedom and um, just less maintenance and story. I mean, it can be really liberating and um, on the other side. <laughs> well, I think I think uh, uh, your message has always been uh, for virtually anything that you're dealing with is uh, communications uh, with the people involved, uh, uh, in this case, your partner, uh, whether it be a husband or wife, a spouse or a, a, a partner of some other variation. Uh, and uh, communications is the key. Find out what the other person really wants. Uh, uh, I was pretty flexible. I just knew we had to go someplace smaller. Uh, and it turned out that uh, Linda had always said, you know, what, what would we go in there? And I said, no, I'm, that's a, you know, golf boat's place. Uh, <laughs> and I just, it, it, it's psychologically, the, the one thing that I miss is having kids in the street. I like the sound of, uh, kids in the street and having fun and talking to each other and all the things that kids do. And so that's about the only thing I miss. Uh, and I told my wife that early on, but there were so many benefits for her and for us there that it made, uh, finally it made sense. And uh, we probably made the decision and closed within literally 10 or 15 days. It was that quick once we decided to move in there. So, but mm -hmm. communications was the key. And yep. uh, we've been very happy here, actually. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it is a, it is an activity for a couple. You have to do it yeah. together, good, bad, whether one of you likes it or not. You have to do it together, and if you do it right, I think it brings you together. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank thank you, Michelle, for helping John and I communicate, uh, so <laughs> we, we so we can uh, uh, understand each other's positions. Um, although the answer are pretty similar in, in this area, and um, uh, for all of the. Uh, 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 couples out there that are thinking about downsizing, uh, don't avoid it, just talk about it. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.